uh, fall 2018. What I like to do in uh, teaching an online course is keep it uh, as close to a face-to-face -face format as possible. So if I would, uh, was teaching this class, actually it was two sections, 90 and 91, but if I were teaching these sections face-to-face, um, -face, you know, what, what I would do the first day is I would uh, cover the syllabus. So um, yeah, I'm going to add some, some footnotes and some things for you to think about and you know, just a little bit of added information to to the syllabus if you just sit down and read it. Uh, guys, my name is Dr. Darbro. Office hours will be virtually on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays for the times that are, are listed. Uh, I'm on campus Mondays and Tuesdays or Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, so I encourage you to stop by if you, um, you know, if you need help. Uh, you know, I pretty much have a drop-in policy if I'm in the uh, in my office and, and not in a meeting or something and you drop by then you know we'll do some stats um, and you know also just stop by and say hello uh, you know I'm teaching all online courses now I think I'm teaching one online undergrad course and three uh, graduate courses online so you know I don't get to see like live bodies live people you know so it's kind of cool when uh, my students drop by and, and, and say hello. And, I, you know, it gives a, a name with a, or I should say a face with a name, uh, which is kind of cool. So, guys, uh, there's my office number, uh, email. I'm going to go through this as, you know, as quickly as possible. Uh, the prereq for this class is 1200, uh, Math 1200, College Algebra, or uh, my approval. Now, if you uh, know someone who's uh, got an ACT of, Oh, I don't know, a math ACT of about 18, 19, 20, 21, and they haven't yet taken college algebra, have them come talk to me. Uh, there's a chance that I would um, uh, approve them to take this class. Uh, guys, my office is in 113, uh, the administration building. It's kind of hard to find, so I've created a map. And, you know, week 12, if you want to come see me and you're like, hey, Dr. Darbo can't find your office, where are you? I will say see the instructional video. Catalog description, GEP requirement, I'm not going to read that to you, it's just one of those things that we have to do, um, uh, to kind of a, you know, just a requirement when we uh, create our uh, class syllabi. Uh, one thing I will tell you is a GEP requirement, once you um, complete this class successfully, you can check that box, the quantitative reasoning box for the uh, general education program requirements. So, you know, good for you when you get that behind you. Uh, ADA statement, uh, if this applies to you, then uh, either you or the ADA, ADA compliance director needs to send <clears throat> me a list of your accommodations. And guys, I'll do everything in my power uh, to make sure that those accommodations are met. All right, now we get into kind of the duh factor, computer access. Guys, this is an online course. Uh, taking a, uh, an online course without having uh, access to a reliable computer and reliable Internet service doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, uh, you, you know, again, uh, you need that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's online. We, we connect via email. We connect through Remind. We connect through Blackboard. We connect through my math lab. You take your exams online. So, so guys, um, you know, <laughs> think that one through. Uh, the last sentence, uh, you are required to have a webcam for test proctoring. Uh, man, you can get those things used for like 10 bucks. And, uh, you know, I know I've been, I was a college student for a long time. You know, 10 bucks sometimes can be a lot of money. But, um, you know, if you don't have to drive to campus to, to uh, get your test proctored, uh, then, you know, that saves money there. So guys, again, uh, computer access, kind of a given with an online course. All right, technology requirements. Uh, we don't use a, gra a, a, like a scientific calculator for statistics. We use StackCrunch. Uh, StackCrunch is a statistical software package, package that's built into your activation to MyStatLab. Uh, so once you get access to MyStatLab, uh, StackCrunch will be there. Uh, I don't do much with StackCrunch the first week, but the second week there's a quiz. Uh, it's kind of a follow-along thing that you have to do with one of the instructional videos on how to teach you StackCrunch. Um, you know, some people say, well, StackCrunch is confusing. Well, yeah, any, learning anything new is confusing. 
But uh, you are completely taking the wrong approach if you just kind of want to bypass stack crunch and do things your own way. It may work for a couple of weeks, but we're eventually going to get to a point where the formulas and the shortcuts that you think you're using uh, will not work. So guys, uh, stack crunch will come at you in the second week. It'll a little, be a little confusing at first. Uh, but I don't ask you to do anything on Stack Crunch that I don't demonstrate in the instructional videos. Uh, guys, scientific calculator, you can use your phone uh, for this. Uh, you know, uh, iPhones these days, if you uh, turn them horizontally, they uh, actually, you know, open up a lot of uh, uh, different things. Uh, so, so, you know, that's fine. But uh, you cannot use your phone on test. But if you want to use your phone on assignments, that's fine. But again, the scientific calculator is to just really to do basic operations, addition, subtraction, square roots, and, and stuff like that. Remind, guys, remind is uh, something that I learned with uh, my daughter's volleyball coach. Uh, it's a texting program that allows me to send push notifications to you. Guys, you are required to join Remind. Now, if you have a smartphone, Text at 7-G-E-A-E-K to the number 81010, uh, 81 easy for you to say. Or if you don't have a smartphone, then uh, you can get email alerts uh, by sending an email to uh, uh, the email account uh, that's listed right there. Now, guys, uh, it's required, and it's also uh, a quiz. You know, we'll have these things called sneaky quizzes. And this is one of those sneaky quizzes, but I'll give you uh, more information at the end of this video. All right, so guys, you need to sign up for Remind. It's a great way for me to stay in touch. Yeah, something I found about you guys, and I mean you guys, you, you know, 18, 19, 20-year-olds, uh, um, which, which I'm not. I'm a little older than that. Uh, you guys don't check email as much as me, and as much as maybe my generation. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I check email... I, I, I literally, I think I check email probably 10 times a day um, because, you know, i got a lot going on. I'm director of our graduate program. I've got grants and stuff. You know, I've got a lot going on that uh, we do communication through email. Uh, but uh, I found out that my students either aren't checking them or they're just not reading my emails. So anyway, uh, this is a texting, a way to stay in touch with you uh, via text. And the cool thing about it is I never know your number, uh, the number that that my push notifications come from is not my number, so it's completely anonymous, uh, so we don't really get uh, information. And it's not that big a deal for me. If you want to know my cell phone number, then uh, I'll give it to you. I just don't uh, publish it, um, you know, in the syllabus. All right, guys, enough of that. Uh, the online course management system, which is extremely important because this is an online course. So, guys, you are required to have access to my math lab, my stat lab. Now, guys, that that's a little confusing because it used to be only my math lab. And it falls under the MyLab, Pearson MyLab platform. The MyStat Lab just actually was created a few years ago because statistics courses have become uh, so popular and so frequent. So guys, uh, what you need here is you need the textbook Business st uh, Statistics, a first course by Levine. Uh, I have no idea how to pronounce her name. And Stefan. Steve, Stephen, uh, one of the two. Uh, there are three ways to purchase access to my stat lab. You can purchase it directly from the bookstore. I think it's about 150 bucks. Don't hold me to that. Uh, maybe higher, maybe lower, probably not lower. Another way uh, you can do it is number two, visit my math lab and purchase directly from Pearson. If you do that, I think you uh, save about 20 bucks, I believe. But uh, you got to have a you know valid credit card and all that stuff. And then you can purchase, of course, from uh, another company like uh, Amazon or uh, what are some of the others, uh, Joseph Beth, uh, you know, some of the others. So guys, once you purchase the access code, you'll have to enter the course ID to get linked to my course, to this course. Uh, the course ID is provided there. Um, and on Blackboard, there is a folder called My Math Lab, and it has step-by-step -step instructions on how to set up your account. Now, 
sometimes uh, maybe you don't want to commit yet. Maybe you don't have the money. Maybe you, you know, you're just wanting to figure out what Dr. Darbo is all about, what business stats is all about. You just want, kind of want to uh, see what it's all about before you commit to, to purchasing the ac- uh, access code. Well, that's fine. But guys, you are still required to have access to my stat lab. And luckily for you, uh, there is a, an option, a 14-day free trial course option um, that you can sign up for. Uh, I'll let you have up to two of those. So with some creative scheduling, you could, you could get a pretty good feel about the first almost five or six weeks uh, just by working the free trial course option. Now, guys, I'm not going to let you have any more than two of those because these people work hard to create their site, and they deserve to be paid for it. But um, I will let you uh, do uh, two 14 days. Most people uh, only need one. Uh, but another important note, uh, my math lab, Pearson, does some really wacky stuff in setting weights and uh, calculating the overall percentage. Uh, I do my best weekly, sometimes uh, twice a week, to go in and override the wackiness that they uh, uh, do in calculating the overall percentage. Uh, it, it makes absolutely zero sense to me, some of the stuff they do behind the scenes. But uh, I go in and, um, and and try to override that you know, once or twice a week. So it's possible that you may go to bed on a Tuesday night and, um, you know, your average is 80 and you wake up the next morning and it's 75%. And, you know, you're sitting there thinking, no, wait a minute, I didn't do anything. And my, and my average dropped 5%. And it's, it, it's also possible that it's 80 and you wake up the next day and it's 85. Um, it just depends on the way that the, uh, the weights and settings have been applied. So, Guys, if it makes you feel better, write me one of those nasty emails and say, it makes no sense to me, uh, but I'm telling you right now, uh, it makes no sense to me what they're doing. But uh, the good news is uh, when the final grade is calculated, I export all of this stuff out of my uh, stat lab into Excel, and I calculate your grades down to the uh, nearest thousandth of a point. So, uh, you know, in the end, when it really matters, you will get the right, uh, the right grade. But sometimes it can be a little frustrating. Uh, my stat lab assignments and due dates, guys, uh, the way this thing works is every Monday by noon, you will have your instructional videos posted uh, on, uh, on Blackboard. And I'll show you what that's going to look like here in just a second. Also by noon, your My Stat Lab assignment will be posted. Your My Stat Lab ass- assignment is due the following Monday at 11 p.m. Now, the first week, I deviate from that just a little bit and make it due Tuesday. I thought that that would just be a a total jerk move by your professor to make the first assignment due on Labor Day. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be hanging out with friends and family and cooking out and having a couple of beers uh, on Labor Day. I don't want to be messing with my math lab assignment because it doesn't apply for me because I'm not taking the course. But... Uh, so, guys, I'm giving you an extra day, but you can see from here on out, uh, all of the assignments are due on Monday, Monday at 11 o'clock, okay? Now, let me jump out of this and, and go into uh, a course that I previously created. Let me just go to the STAT 1800 course that I taught in the spring, and let me show you how what this is going to look like. So, you'll typically go to Content. And some of this stuff at the top you're not going to see because I'm not using Examity anymore. But uh, you're going to see the class syllabus and you're going to see the in, uh, introductory video that I'm <laughs> currently posting. Uh, the first three things you see, if you click this, it'll open up um, instructions, detailed instructions on how to, uh, to, to get your My Math Lab account if you don't know how to do that. Uh, here are handouts that go along with some of the instructional videos, and here are data sets that go along with some of the instructional videos. Uh, but what will happen is, like for January the 8th, and again, this was taught last uh, spring, uh, if you'll open that, you'll see that you have instructional videos. Now, this was a light week because I usually go light on the first week because there's enough going on with you trying to you know, get familiar with the class, get signed up for my stat lab, 
uh, you know, there's a lot going on. So I kind of take it easy on you the first week. However, you will see that there's weeks. Well, that was actually an easy week. All right, cool. Let me see uh, if I can find a week that... Uh, now watch, I'll just find the weeks. Okay, there's a week where uh, there were five videos. And each of these videos is about, you know, 45 minutes. So, you know, you're looking at... Uh, uh, significant amount of time you'll be watching videos but guys uh you know this will be posted on monday uh, by noon so guys you click the video link and what will happen it'll link you to my youtube account and the instructional video will start playing oh that just makes me cringe when i hear my voice uh so anyway these instructional videos will sometimes be with powerpoint very rarely i think there's only maybe three videos that uh, go along with PowerPoint. So most of them are going to look more like this. So you're going to see a whole lot of my hand. So guys, you know, somebody, some people say, well, I'm really leery of taking an online course because I'm going to have to learn all the material myself. No, you don't either. These are the same lectures, they're the same goofy jokes, they're the same boring stories that I tell in my face-to-face -face class. It is exactly the same. I have taught these classes so many times that, I'm, that I'm, I'm, uh, I had a high school teacher one time come in and observe me, and he's like, Dr. Darber, you're just on autopilot. And I really am. Um, it's the same thing. The instructional videos are exactly the same. The problem is this. The problem is when you're face-to-face, you almost got to listen, or I'm going to call you out if you're sleeping or on your phone or something, whereas when it's not face-to-face, -face, you can pretty much do what you want to do. And Some students just don't have the self-discipline to sit down, watch the videos, take the notes, use their notes when they're on, uh, working their assignments on my math lab, my stat lab, and they try to make, take the easy way out. And then when we get down into assignment four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, when stuff gets really hard, they're lost. And then they want to get ugly and they want to start blaming somebody when the fact of the matter is they just should blame themselves because they approached the class in the wrong way. But that's not the way we uh, like to work things uh, uh, these days, is it? Uh, and I, you know, I'm even guilty as charged about that sometimes. So, uh, guys, a couple of notes down here. A 50% penalty is assessed for work that's submitted after the due date. So, for example, let's say you don't get this, this assignment in on time, but you get half of it in on time. Well, the half that you got in on time is never going to be penalized. But if you take the other 50% and you get all that right, then you're only going to get 25 credits. So you would end up in that scenario with a 75. 50% on what you submitted by the due date, and then 50% that you submitted after the due date, but again, there's a 50% penalty. Guys, the reason is, this is not a self-paced class. There is so much stuff, so much material. I almost feel guilty uh, with this class because it is very, very challenging. There's a lot of stuff here, and uh, I mean, it's just a lot of information to, to throw at you each week. So it's just very, very, very important that you... Um, that, that you stay up to date. You do not want to fall behind in this class. It's just, it's uh, academic suicide to, to do that. Um, all right, the penalty applies only to questions. Okay, cool. Uh, assignments one th through eight can, uh, cannot be submitted after you take your exam. I think that's just goofy. That's just somebody just trying to play school. These assignments right here are to get you prepared to take your midterm. All right? Uh, so after you take your midterm, we're on to new stuff. I don't want you back here farting around with assignment one through eight when I'm trying to teach you new stuff. So guys, I close down assignments one through eight once you take your midterm exam. Now you can still go in and access them because you know, you'll probably want to access them when you study for your final exam. You just can't go in and change your scores. And if you do, then... Uh, well, you can't because it's the way I set it up. Uh, supplemental instructor. Guys, some of you are going to need help in this class. It's, uh, it's going to be challenging. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to keep it real. Um, 
Alex Kozan, uh, I think he's going to be available for four hours a week for tutoring. Uh, and I, I don't yet know where he's going to hold those uh, tutoring sessions. I know he's going to hold some of them online uh, virtually, so you can just uh, just pop into his Zoom. Uh, uh, he's got a Zoom account set up, and he'll give you the link, so you can just pop into it and, and get the tutoring uh, kind of on demand You know, during those four scheduled hours. Um, but uh, I have to get back with you on that because uh, he hasn't yet uh, sent me his schedule. But um, now, what, uh, since assignments are due on Monday at 11, uh, I'll make sure that he has some of these uh, available from, um, you know, at least a couple of three hours on Mondays. So, guys, to be uh, successful in the class, you just got to watch the videos. You got to take uh, uh, notes because you're just not going to remember all this stuff. I mean, when I start throwing stuff about, uh, you know, ANOVA and... Uh, and multiple regression and p-values and test statistics and all these things at you, you're going to need to be organized. And uh, so watch the videos, take notes, recopy your notes, do your assignments on time, and, uh, and you know check your email regularly and check your phone because I'm going to send uh, push notifications through Remind. All right, a lot of stuff going on here, isn't there? Uh, calculating your final grade. Uh, that's the way it'll be calculated. Uh, I do have a uh, policy that I've used for years and years and years that if you score higher on exam two, then I replace your exam one, which is lower, uh, with your exam two score. So guys, if you s say you bomb the first exam and get, uh, I'll tell you, I'll just give you an example of something that happened. Uh, it happened about six or seven years ago. I had a um, student in my stat 1500, it's 1150 now, but Staff 1500 at the time, and you know, she got 26 on the first exam. <clears throat> she came in and talked to me about it. She was a nursing student, and she said, uh, uh, Dr. Darborough, I'm not a 26 student. I'm an A student. I don't know what happened. And I said, well, the good thing is your final exam can replace that score if your final exam is, is higher. So she had a 26 on the midterm. She got a 91 on the final Using that policy, she ended up having a 91 and a 91, which is a heck of a lot better than a 26 and a 91. Uh, so uh, she ended up with an A in the class. The reason is, is the, uh, the reason I do that is the final exam is comprehensive. <clears throat> so I feel that if you didn't get the stuff through the first time, but you ended up getting it in the end, uh, you should be rewarded for that. And guys, it doesn't work in replace. If you get a 91 on the first exam and a 26 on the mid on the final, then you're stuck with a 91 and a 26. Guys, <clears throat> your exams are going to be uh, proctored online by ProctorU. I, I, that's too much going on right now for me to get into all that. Uh, I'm just going to tell you that um, I'll provide more information probably around week five or week six. I'm still working on the contract with ProctorU, so there's still some things um, that have to be worked out some I's that need to be dotted and T's that need to be crossed before uh, I provide that information to you. All right, gang, speaking of sneaky quizzes, you can expect, and these things are embedded in the instructional videos, and there's no forewarning. They're usually not statistical. They're like, like one, I think this is like quiz, sneaky quiz number three or number four. Uh, we'll ask you, what is Dr. Darbro's hobby, favorite hobby? Well, guys, I love to scuba dive. I'm a scuba diver. Uh, I got my advanced certification uh, a couple years ago, so now it means I can go <clears throat> deeper and do cool wrecks and, you know, swim with sharks and all sorts of crazy stuff. But, uh, you know, just randomly in a video, I say, all right, guys, sneaky quiz number four. Send an email to, Dr. to me at ddarbro at shiny.edu. And all you got to do is say, Dr. Darbo's favorite hobby is scuba diving. You get 25 out of 25. If you don't submit it, then you get 0 out of 25. These things cannot be submitted late. There's no forewarning. And if you want to truly piss me off, these will be posted on my math lab, my stat lab. All of a sudden, you'll see one of these like sneaky quiz or like quiz number one, 25 out of 25 if you submitted it, 0 out of 25. And I get these emails all the time from students who say, 
Dr. Darvel, I watch every single video. You did not post a sneaky quiz this week. I'm not going to go back through and tell you the spot because you're just telling, them, telling me you didn't watch the video because everybody else submitted it and you're saying that, that your video was the only one it wasn't included in. That's ridiculous. So don't, don't do that. That just that even ticks me off just talking about it. Guys, I promise you, if there's a, 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 a sneaky quiz score posted on my stat lab, it was in that week's videos. I'm not going to make it up, okay? So uh, please, uh, please don't do that. Okay, but anyway, good news. Uh, you have two sneaky quizzes the first week. Sneaky quiz zero. All you got to do is send an email to me at that email account and tell me four things. Tell me, uh, number one, tell me your name and your preferred email address. The reason I do that is uh, a couple of years ago, I had a student that uh, about week seven or eight, she claimed that she wouldn't get my email, uh, uh, my emails because I was sending it to the wrong account. Yet she never told me what was the right account because the only account, email account I had was the one on record through uh, my SSU. So uh, that's the reason I do that. So preferred email address, tell me something interesting about you. Um, and then type what I have on 3 and 4. Guys, this has to be submitted by Tuesday at 11 p.m. or you get a zero. So, and just for kind of my sanity, type that in the subject line. All right, so it's a 25-point quiz. Do that, you get 25 out of 25 on your sneaky quiz number zero. Sneaky quiz number one, as I told you earlier, signing up for Remind is required. So, now you don't have to send this email, but if you don't send the email, you get 0 out of 25 on the quiz. So, all you have to do there is send me an email. All you got to do is just type, I signed up for Remind. It doesn't have to be anything uh, complex or drawn out. And, guys, put that. It just helps me, you know, drag it to the right folder uh, and to make sure that you get credit when you submit it. So, uh, just type that in the subject line. And, again, this is due Tuesday, September 4th by 11 p.m. And actually, as I put this, uh, put up this video, I've already uh, received these from uh, seven or eight students, which is super cool because it tells me that you're proactive and you're, you're already going ahead and accessing Blackboard without being told to do so. So guys, I tell you, I look forward to working with you. I really do. Um, I, I, my success rates... Uh, for the online courses, believe it or not, are higher than my success rates for my face-to-face. -face. I, I, I just can't even provide a narrative that makes any sense why. Uh, I think one reason sometimes people get sick and they have to miss the face-to-face -face lectures, where if you get sick this way, it, the lectures are always there. Once you get feeling better, all you got to do is log on and watch them. Um, so... I think another thing is uh, we seem to have a lot more working professionals who are taking classes now. And I had a nurse, uh, uh, I think it was uh, last year, maybe the year before, she wasn't taking STAT 1800, she was taking 1150, but uh, she told me that she worked like a, maybe a, like a, I don't know, like an 11 to 11 shift or something. And she'd get off at like at 11 p.m. and she would come in, uh, get home about uh, midnight, grab something to eat. And she said she was wide awake, not ready for bed yet. So she would watch uh, the instructional videos uh, from about 11, eight, uh, I'm sorry, 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. She did tell me, uh, which I thought was very funny, that my uh, instructional videos helped put her to sleep. So uh, I, I don't know if that was a compliment or not. So, so guys, again, uh, I'm just rambling here. Um, I meant to keep it short, but uh, I'm just in a rambling mood. So guys, if there's anything in here that doesn't make sense, uh, you know, make sure you, you contact me and ask, all right? And don't forget to submit Sneaky Quiz Zero and Sneaky Quiz One. So guys, I hope you have a great semester. Uh, take care.